we are going to make silage using super napier and also add on energy and from our previous video we said that super napier contains a considerable amount of protein but is low in energy and how do we make silage and improve on the energy content in the super napier make sure you follow us as we make silage from the start to the end if you haven't watched our previous video on the super napier and its characteristics and how to establish it make sure you check it on our link below don't forget to subscribe at farm with paul as we had promised we're going to show you step by step on how we make our own uh, silage by use of super napier from this video i had shown you previously that uh, super napier contains a very good uh, amount of protein but very low energy and for this case we are going to show you on how we add energy during uh, silage making for our own super napier after harvesting the super napier we let it out for some few days to actually wilt and specifically it was four days and as you can see it already wilted to around 70 percent and this helped in reducing excess water and preventing rotting in our own silage after that we did chop to around one inch or a half an inch this is to ensure proper compacting and reduce the amount of air in between the particles and uh, the most important thing is the size of those particles will actually help during uh, feeding your own cows because the rumen uh, contains some bacteria and these bacteria properly work very well whenever the particles of your forage are quite uh, small but not excessively small because if they are excessively small your cows won't be able to chew cud and if they are not able to chew cud it will lead to something called acidosis in this part we used maize jam as our source of energy yes maize jam is a byproduct of uh, maize milling and uh, we incorporated it in our super napier this is because from our previous video when we were reviewing on uh, the super napier we had told you that it contains good considerable amount of protein but very low energy for to make our own silage we are going to use molasses and the ratio of molasses to water is one is to three what i mean is if you use one part of molasses for example you decide i'm going to use 20 liters of molasses yeah then you'll uh, mix together with 60 liters of water for our case we used that uh, can to actually measure because uh, this was uh, for the purpose of making you this video so we use three parts uh, of water and one part of molasses what happens is the bacteria which are readily available in the napier that produce the lactic acid will be able to consume the sugars and be able to properly work and produce very good amount of lactic acid lactic acid is what preserves your silage for a very long time so you make sure you have uh, very good uh, either molasses or other additives uh, which are available in the market market i'm not going to mention them all because I'm not actually going to market for them, but uh, there are some other uh, uh, products that produce the lactic acid that are very good in uh, making your own silage as long as you properly compact and do not use excess water and you can make very good, uh, nice silage. Whatever you are going to put your own silage depends. Some will use the uh, plastic bags like what I'm going to do. Some use the blue tank, some use uh, wooden uh, boxes, some use pits. Some use what you call surface silage, all that, as long as the aim is to preserve your silage for a very long time. Somebody will ask, after how long are we going to feed this silage? For this purpose, we are going to feed this silage after 21 days. From the day that uh, we actually made it, we are going to feed it after 21 days days and uh if you use other inoculars there are some inoculars that fasten the process and you can actually use your silage within 14 days but for this case we are going to use this for after for uh 21 days and uh we hope uh, that our silage will be yellow in color and will be containing that sweet smell which will be palatable to our own cows and the mist jam will be uh, there to provide the energy even to our own cows for milk production purposes after that, we actually chopped, uh, sprinkled uh, molasses to the chopped fodder. Distrib and one thing you can note from here, it's either you sprinkle it uh, uh, like this or use a pump. I've seen models of you actually using the water, uh, watering can and putting excess 
uh, excessive amount of molasses and water and whenever you are uh, you, you put that excessive molasses and uh, the excessive mixture of molasses and water your silage will become soaky and when it becomes soaky high chances of actually rotting are very high and if you want to keep your silage to last for even uh, three years you ensure you have a uh, very minimal amount of water you should not be dripping a lot of water from it but just have it evenly distributed to ensure the lactic acid uh, can be evenly distributed but do not use excess water because excessive water will actually lead to rotting your own silage after this uh, we are going actually to sprinkle our maize jam all over properly and mix it this is i've told you again and again Napier contains very low amount of energy, so the only option we have is to use actually other products such as the maize jam. If you have uh, well grounded maize, you can actually use it. If you have in excess, because uh, that is more uh, contains at least more of the energy and also contains some part of uh, crude protein, which is actually beneficial to your own cows. After sprinkling it properly, or over again, uh, we are going to mix it. This to ensure that molasses that uh, we sprinkled will be attached to this maize jam uh, the maize jam will attach itself to those molasses and those particles of the napier and the molasses and uh, the maize jam will be evenly distributed in all the parts someone may ask is it a must we use the maize jam during the making of the silage or can we feed it separately it's not a must actually to incorporate the maize jam in your making the silage by use of the napier but you can make your own silage without the maize jam but when feeding ensure you also have feed the same same maize jam to your own cows as a source of energy this is because a cow requires what you call a balanced diet and a balanced diet includes what we call protein, it includes a source of energy, it also includes a source of uh, vitamins, it also includes some uh, minerals which include calcium and phosphorus and all that. So to have a balanced diet, you can include it when making the silage or after you make your own silage, you can uh, be feeding at least around 1 kg of the 1 or 2 kgs depending on other materials that you're going to feed to your cows. Uh, you can feed one or two kgs of the maize jam. For me, I don't prefer using uh, Poland because someone else might ask, why can I use the Poland in the same in the making of the silage? Because Poland and maize jam have two different characteristics in a cow, which we are going to talk more about it on another video, whereby we do not use excessive of uh, Poland and why corn is highly used in dairy cows compared to a source or a wheat, uh, wheat products because of the excess uh, glutination and uh, formation of uh, fats, which uh, are not actually good for a milking cow. Anyway, after we, may, we sprinkled properly, it's now time to mix. As you can see from uh, this video, it's evenly distributed. You can see how the molasses and the maize jam are evenly distributed. So meaning, even when we are going to feed our cows, our cows, when a cow takes a bite, it will be able to take a bite of uh, maize jam, uh, the maize jam and also the napier and also one thing that i have to insist ensure you harvest your napier at the right stage because if you let your napier to overgrow then uh, the nutrients in that uh, napier will be very low for example i've seen people actually making silage with a napier that is around uh, five meters high that means that napier contains what we call undigestible fiber where else uh, that means your cows will be producing more manure so that and uh, those are the kind of people I call uh, farm uh, or the what I call the manure farmers instead of milk farmers. So ensure you harvest at the right stage when the nutrients are optimum. Because the more the plant grows, the more it reduces the amount of nutrients and the more it forms things we call tannins. Tannins are undigestible fibers which are not beneficial to the cow. Now we are actually going to transport this to a bunker, which in this case. We are going to use the plastic bags and uh, as i told you before you can use several uh, preserving method which you can actually decide i want you want to bail it into bales you can decide to use the plastic bags someone else can decide to use the plastic tank someone else can be uh, can construct a, a bunker by probably using the uh, concrete and all that the only aim is to ensure our silage can stay for a very long time, airtight and free from water and other rodents. 
and what is the difference between all those methods that uh, other people use the difference is the cost and uh, every method has its own advantage and disadvantage so you can assess which is best for you and which can uh, which method can preserve enough order for your cows for quite some time and uh, also ensure whenever you are going to preserve your silage it's in a place whereby it's easily accessible and can uh, even your farm workers can be able to feed it or you in person you can be able to access and feed to your own cows here we are compacting uh, the chopped super napier mixed with the uh, maize jam and molasses uh, into our silage bags this is to ensure that uh, there is no air we ensure it's properly compacted that uh, air is reduced and uh, to give a good environment for the bacteria that produce lactic acid to be able to work on it and uh, we ensure also that uh, the bags that we are going to use has no holes and it's uh, well kept to ensure no air goes in or water and uh, that will help to preserve the silage and after 21 days you can be able to feed this silage it will be very nice very smelling very nice and uh, yellow in color and uh, it will be good to feed to your own cows and the main aim of actually compacting this is to reduce the air in between the particles and that will be very good in lactic production the other part that uh, mistake that i've seen most farmers do is they let uh, they compact the same same bags and after the uh, bag fall they do not uh, actually raise it back up and that actually uh, disorganizes the particles inside and letting air and high chances are those bags start rotting ensure that your bags are upright and well compacted and do not put a lot of uh, fodder uh, at once you put bit by bit which is around one foot high and compact it completely do not put a lot that uh, will actually you can actually not be able to compact for because on this case we are using labor for uh, human labor so we are not using a machine to compact if it was a machine that is quite heavy we can actually use a we can actually pour in a lot but uh, in this part we're using human labor so we pour bit by bit and compact it properly and after 21 days we feed to our own cows after it was completely filled we tied on the top and added some weight on it this weight will help to ensure that it stays airtight and uh, also no air goes in after we have actually tied it up and we are going to be here after 21 days and we are going to show you the results of our own silage if you haven't subscribed to our youtube channel make sure you do so if you haven't watched our other videos on uh napier on uh what is super napier how to establish and the various advantage and disadvantage of it make sure you go back and watch it in our youtube channel at farm with paul see you and make sure you leave a comment uh comment below any question will be answered for you anything you haven't understood kindly make sure you leave a comment and if you have another farmer who now doesn't know how to make the silage you can actually share the video with him or her